Welcome back to Procedural Generation with Godot. In this part, we're going to look at creating an infinite 2D terrain of smooth rolling hills. Ready? Let's get started. To start making my terrain, I'm going to add a line 2D. This will be the visible terrain on our screen that will show the, the hills that we're making. And then we're going to attach a script to this main node. And we're going to start by defining some of our variables. We're going to have um, number of hills is how many hills we're going to generate at a time. I forgot the word var. We're going to, how many hills we'll generate at a time. Uh, slice is going to be how much we slice them up, how many increments we divide the hill up into and then hill range is going to be how much they vary the um, the vertical variance when we create them uh, screen size we're going to need to capture when we run so that we can tell when we're drawing off the screen or on the screen uh, we're going to make We're going to use an array to hold all of the points that we're generating using the algorithm. In our ready function, we're going to initialize the random number generator. We're going to initialize the terrain just to make sure it is empty. And we need to pick our starting point, the, the starting point for the terrain, which is going to be on the left-hand side of the screen, so the x is going to be 0 but we want the y to be random. Uh, so we're going to pick just a start y value that's going to be the screen size, the y screen size, uh, which we need to capture too, didn't we? We forgot to do that. Screen size is going to be get viewport, get visible rect dot size. Then we want the y screen size, and I'm going to start it around 3 quarters of the way from the top. It's just a arbitrary choice. We we want the terrain to mostly be the bottom section of the screen, so we leave some room up above. We don't want to be going off the top. So we're going to go three quarters of the way down, and then we're going to add plus or minus 100. 100 being our hill range. So we want to go down by 100 uh, plus rand i percent hill range times 2. And that's going to add, add some number between 0 and 200. But since we subtracted 100, it's basically minus 100 to plus 100. And now we have a starting point. So that will be our first item in the terrain. We append 0 start y. And that's where our hills will start on the left-hand side. Then what we're going to do is run our add, add hills function, which, we're, which is going to be the code that actually implements the algorithm. Add hills. So what is this going to do? So we're going to start by, let's make a little room here. We're going to start by making a variable to calculate how wide our hills are going to be. And that's screen size dot x divided by the number of hills. Oops, I wrote a z there. And then we need to figure out how big the individual slices are going to be. And that's just going to be that width hill width divided by slice the slice size. And then we need to figure out what our starting point is. So our starting point is going to be the last point in the terrain, which when we first start, we only have one point in the terrain, right? That's our starting point on the left-hand side. But we want to be able to add, keep adding more hills as we go to have our terrain continue. And we just want to stick it on the end of the last hill that we made so that they'll be continuous and there won't be any jumps. 
So now we just need to iterate through the hills and make the hills. So we're going to say for i in range num hills. So for each hill, we need to do this. So first, we need to figure out what the height of the hill is going to be. That's going to be a random value. Using the hill range, take our start dot y and subtract that height we just calculated. So that's how high up we're going to go. And now we need to do the cutting apart into slices for j in range. We want to go from zero to whatever the hill slices size is. And we're going to do a point at each of these slice widths. So this is where the math comes in. So we're going to, this is going to be a vector two. And I'm going to do this on separate lines just because it starts to get really it just starts to get really long. You could easily do this on one line, but hill point. The x point is going to be start the start x plus j times slice. That's how far over it goes. Plus hill um, hill width hill width times i. So that's how far we move and then the hill or we move to the right and then the hill point dot y is going to be the start dot y plus the height times and i'm going to use the cosine function in this case you can try other functions to get different patterns but um, the cosine gives you a nice smooth flowing hill multiply that by hill slices times j See what I mean about the lines getting long. In fact, I could probably zoom in here a bit so they'll all fit on the screen. And then, uh, oops, I want too many parentheses there. So now we have our two points being set, and we can add that to our line. Add point, hill point. And then when this loop completes and we've done the two hills, then we take the start y and we add height to it so we can do the next hill. And let's run this now and see how it works. There we go. There's our two hills. So we start here's our start point. It generated the first hill with that random height. And then it generated the second hill. And when we run it, you should see we get a different, a pretty wide variety of, yeah, see there we, first hill was a little taller. Run it one more time here. Oh, that one we got a really tall hill. Now to make our terrain be solid so that we can walk on it, we're going to need a, uh, we're going to need a collision body. So I'm going to add a static body to D there as well. So we have something to land on when we uh, when we place our character in the game, and so the polygon there, the the collision shape of this static body is going to be generated by the by the terrain code. So we're going to add that now into our code. So we have um, here we're going to make when we start out we're going to start calculating what the polygon is. So we'll set a pool vector to array. And then whenever we add a hill point, a point to the line, we're also going to append it to the polygon. And then after we have finished, so right here, then we can make a new shape. So collision polygon 2D dot new and then we set the shape uh, the shape of that to it so static body 2d dot add child shape and 
we'll add some um, we need to add two more points to make it a closed curve because we have the we have the curve of the line on top we need two more to make it closed so we'll add a couple of vectors vector twos here to get the end point so the last point in our terrain is that one and screen size dot y and then we also need the opposite corner which is the start dot x screen size dot y so we're just adding those two and then shape dot polygon equals poly now that should make us and actually here we can go over here and turn on visible collision shapes and we should see if it makes it all right so there's our collision shape being made when we generate excellent okay so now what I have is in the starting project I have a scene called runner and this is a small um, kinematic body 2d with uh, left and right arrow controls for it to move so if we take our terrain and instance that runner in here we should be able to land on the polygon and move and there we go now we can you know run along the run along the hills pretty good and then of course we fall off the end so and we have a camera attached to this runner as well that's following it as it moves along so we want to be able to generate some more hills whenever we get to them so that we could keep exploring and never find the end so what we can do is add a check and we can do that in process to see if the runner has traveled far enough that we need to generate new hills and so we're going to say if the last this is the last point in the train so the x coordinate of the last point in the train is less than the runner runner's x position plus the screen size the screen width divided by 2 so if we're for, if this is going to be if we're within half a screen width of the last point in the train then we need to add more hills and let's run that and see what happens Oh, whoops, we are generating all of the hills in the same point. Why is that? Oh, I see why. Yeah, so we skipped a line here. We need to keep adding the terrain here. This terrain array is what's keeping our list of coordinates. That's how we're finding where our next start point is. So we weren't appending it. Uh, we're just using the line 2D to do the drawing because uh, we're going to get rid of it in a few minutes and that should do it okay so there we are we travel some more now we've got a continuous line of hills going nice and smooth and this will just keep going as long as we care to do it now i did put some uh, a zoom out on the camera just so you can see right we could see how they're getting generated when we get close enough but of course, if we're zoomed in the right amount, we can't see that far away and we wouldn't see them popping into existence. All right, so the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make those hills look a little nicer by uh, getting rid of the line and using a texture. Okay, so at the top here, we're gonna load our texture. Let's have a grass PNG. And we're going to use a polygon 2D to display this. So down here, we can get rid of the line. And you could actually go and even remove the node now. We're not going to use it. But I'll leave it there. Uh, and here we're, we are making our collision polygon. We're also going to make, I'll call it ground, a polygon 2D to display everything and so the polygon 2d the ground ground dot polygon we set it the same way that we set the collision shape and then we set its texture equal to our texture and then we just add it as a child and 
and we'll be able to see it. Oops, oh, and then we got to make sure that when we import the grass, we enable repeat and we turn off filter. There we go. Now it will repeat, you know, basically tile that texture on the hills and we have a nice, nice looking grass rolling hills that we can run and frolic along. Right, thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful to you and you find ways to use it in your own projects. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks again.